Why are deserts dry? When you think of the desert, you think of a place with hot temperatures and dry, sandy landscapes. But why is the desert so dry? In this video, we'll take a look at the science behind why deserts are dry and why they are so hot. To understand why deserts are so dry, it helps to first understand the water cycle. The water cycle is the process by which water moves through the environment, from the atmosphere to the ground, and back into the atmosphere. Water evaporates from the oceans, lakes, and rivers, and rises into the atmosphere as vapor. This vapor then cools and condenses into clouds, which eventually release precipitation in the form of rain or snow. The precipitation falls to the ground and is absorbed by the soil, and then eventually evaporates back into the atmosphere. The water cycle is important for understanding why deserts are so dry because deserts get very little precipitation. This is due to their location and climate. Deserts are typically located near the equator, where the sun is strongest and temperatures are highest. This high temperature causes the air to rise quickly, which causes the clouds to quickly move away from the desert. As a result, the clouds don't have enough time to build up and release precipitation. In addition to getting very little precipitation, deserts have low humidity, which is the amount of water vapor in the air. This is due to the fact that the air is so hot and dry that it can't hold much water vapor, and any water vapor that is present evaporates quickly. This low humidity further contributes to why deserts are so dry. In addition to the water cycle and low humidity, there are a few other factors that contribute to why deserts are so dry. One of these is the wind. Deserts typically have strong winds that blow away any clouds before they have a chance to release precipitation. Another factor is the fact that deserts typically have little vegetation, which means that there is less water being absorbed into the ground. Finally, deserts are often located in areas with mountains that block moisture from entering the area. Now that we've explored the science behind why deserts are so dry, let's take a look at why they are so hot. One of the major contributing factors is the fact that deserts are usually located near the equator. This is because the sun's rays are most intense near the equator, and the air is able to absorb more of the sun's energy. In addition, deserts usually have little vegetation, which means that there is less shade to help cool the air. Finally, the sand and rocks in the desert reflect and absorb more of the sun's energy, which further contributes to the high temperatures. Now that we've explored the science behind why deserts are dry and hot, let's take a look at how people can adapt to living in these conditions. One way is to use technology to create artificial oases, or areas of green vegetation that help to cool the air and provide shade. Another way is to use irrigation and greenhouses to grow crops in the desert, which can help to provide food and water to people living in the area. Finally, people can also use solar energy to power their homes and businesses, as the desert receives a large amount of sunlight. In conclusion, deserts are dry and hot due to a combination of factors such as the water cycle, low humidity, strong winds, mountains blocking moisture, and the intense sunlight near the equator. People living in these conditions can adapt by using technology to create artificial oases, using irrigation and greenhouses to grow crops, and using solar energy 